gaming on the Windows 95 platform. Uh, basically, this is the point where you like couldn't, well, you didn't really have to DOS box everything. Uh, like every, like every logically made game, you would use F2 to start a new game. And I will get underway with that in three, two, one, go. So if you're wondering what the story is for Fury 3, it's pretty much um, robots, 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 evil, bad robots, stop evil, bad robots from hurting people. And you fly around to a bunch of different planets and um, uh, just destroy a bunch of installations they have, destroy their weapon caches, and invariably free everybody. So um, I'm doing the all objectives category, which means that every objective that appears at the top of the screen, I'm going to do all of that. There isn't any percent run of this, which is significantly shorter. Uh, by uh, Mighty TTC, who I can see in the chat. And this is the most important item of the entire run, Turbo. It is significantly faster than just having your throttle all the way up on your ship. So Turbo Farming and Turbo Management is a massive part of being able to go fast in this. Admittedly, I struggle a lot with the first level in this because my color blindness acts up and it's hard to see some of the walkers on the ground. If you're further away, you can kind of see their shadow on the ground before they get into range, but um, otherwise it can be a little tricky for someone like me. Uh, you're going to notice that uh, I'm mashing a lot. And it was actually quite rude of me to uh, not introduce my co-commentator, the space bar. But um, the default fire rate in this game is really slow, which is why I'm going to be mashing through pretty much the entire run. Now, admittedly, it's not as necessary with these guys because they go down in like one or two shots, but eventually it's going to start having you destroy uh, buildings and structures, and then it becomes way more necessary. So every level ends by flying to the jump zone, it doesn't really matter how close you are to the jump zone structure itself, as long as you're flying directly over it, it'll take you to the next stage. So this is the point where the mashing becomes a little more hectic. And we also get introduced to tunnels. Tunnels are actually a big part of how the any percent run of this game works, because in any percent, well, just how this game works in general, uh, anytime you enter a tunnel, it automatically completes all of the objectives that happened uh, before you got into the tunnel. And I missed the turbo, but that's not good. Also, anytime you get hit, you can just get um, like spun around, turned upside down, and it can be really disorienting. Uh, fortunately, in tunnels, you are always moving forward. So, like, there's no mystery about like, am I going forward in the tunnel, backward in the tunnel? You're always going forward. Now, part of the pain of using the default weapon for this is that... Uh, ow, my wrist. Is that uh, it's not a particularly fast weapon. Like, if you see me shoot and then use a turbo, uh, I will move faster than the shots I fire. That's how slow this weapon is. Uh, eventually, we're going to get more weapons that uh, not only have better fire rates and more power, but also uh, better velocity on them. So, I'll be honest, some of these targets don't really make a lot of sense to me. I don't know why we're destroying power shuttles. We just are. And it will not be too long. I actually have um, one of the weapons already that I'm going to make heavy use of later in the run, but I don't have a lot of ammo for it, so I'm holding off on it for now. Also, um, if you're wondering what the indicators are on the top left, the right one, that's completely empty, that's my throttle. The left one is the more important one, which is my shield. Uh, I am going to do a lot of just charging through stuff in an attempt to go faster. Um, I'm not going to take a whole lot of damage from each individual one, but the damage can add up really fast. So 
Because it's a marathon run, I'm going to be a little more careful about uh, shield management. Right. I do occasionally make little detours like this to get extra weapons. You'll see me do that a couple of times uh, a bit later in the run. Because there are certain like installations on the map which are just caches for weapons and turbo. And this is the annoying thing about doing all objectives, is uh, you'll end up flying all over the map to just destroy the most seemingly random things. Um, there is actually a slight time save you can do on this if you know where everything is. Uh, you Sometimes it'll have you jump all over the map, sometimes it'll kind of do it in order. Uh, if you know where everything is, you can kind of plan your own route instead of following the order that the game tells you to do things in. This, I'm going to try and just keep myself relatively straight and eventually slow down so that I can pick up these turbos and the dead-on missiles. Dead-on missiles are decently strong, uh, they don't have any homing capability, unlike most of the other missiles, and here's the first boss. So every boss, well, almost every boss, has these things around it. They're basically shield generators. You have to destroy all of them or you cannot damage the boss. So I'm gonna create some distance, aim for the head. Ah, oh, come on. Ah, I got outside of the hitbox. And now, some of these tunnels can be really hard to see once you finish the boss. Uh, I, and I'm going to take advantage of my iframes to clip through the walls and grab some of those lasers. Uh, sonic kinetic lasers, that's your default weapon, but if you get the power-up for it, it'll uh, cause both your cannons to fire at once instead of alternating like they usually do. And if you power up them even further, you can get... Uh, like quad blasters for them. So they'll do significantly more damage. And that is mission complete, and that is going to do it for this world. Now instead of flying to the target, I'm going to make a detour off to the right, because there is a little stockpile over here where I can get some rapid fire lasers and some turbo. And I'm going to switch to the rapid fire laser right now. where you start uh, destroying significantly larger structures that take significantly more ammo. So having like a cache of rapid fire lasers built up is a significant help once you get to the second world. Eventually we'll get to the point where uh, most enemies just start dropping rapid fire laser power-ups. Uh, don't usually count on that as part of the run, but it's certainly nice to have that little something extra. And this becomes a target later, so I'm just going to destroy it now. I usually just don't pay attention to the regular enemies flying around, although they can very easily cause significant time loss, because if you run into them or get shot by them, uh, sometimes the game just loves to turn you in a random direction when you take damage. But you can end up facing straight at the ground, you're going to end up upside down, turned around, unless you're in a tunnel. So I'm going to try and go a little faster through this one. Uh, that weapon I passed doesn't really matter. That's a dispersion cannon, which basically acts like a... If a shotgun shell just shot the pellets one at a time, that's kind of what that weapon is like. It's not particularly good. The Vipers, however, are really good. Vipers are uh, heat-seeking missiles. So for certain bosses, they are incredibly handy to have. Each boss in this game usually has a particular area where you're supposed to shoot it, but sometimes it's not particularly clear where that is unless you have something that can home in on that area. Also, you can go above the cloud line in this rather nice, and sometimes you have to do it, otherwise you'll crash into a mountain. Get 
my turbo is getting a little low. Probably have to focus on that a little bit in the next world. Well, next stage of this world, I should say. Alright, tunnel sequence number two. I, uh, like, even in casual play, those fan blade things that you see, like, you're supposed to wait uh, for a certain point and then fly through them. But um, I always get hit by that. And we just got the f cubed missile, or as I like to call it, the f And the Bion Fury missiles. Both of those are really powerful weapons. Bion Furies in particular are pretty integral to the run. They are heat-seeking missiles, but they are much stronger than the Vipers. And the f missile is uh, so powerful you can only carry one at one time, but it basically wipes the screen. And it does a significant amount of damage uh, if you're facing a boss. Entering another tunnel relatively soon. There it is. Oh, geez. Sorry if I end up not talking much during the tunnel sections in particular. Uh, most of the best weapons uh, that you'll find are either in one of two places. One, in one of these tunnels, or two, in some really out of the way location on the map that makes them almost impractical to go after. It's not always the case, but it's often the case. So, this is our first outdoor boss. And he has significantly more shield generators. And unfortunately, it means having to deal with all these minions. Unless I pull out my f missile, wipe the screen, and my game just minimized. Uh. So, um, tech crew, what should I do? Th not to have an overused phrase. But this has never happened before. <laughs> you can see a tiny square. Well, um, hmm. Do I keep going? I guess that's the big question. <laughs> I'm going to try and pull an elite gamer move. Just one second. Can you still hear the game? Because if you can, I'm just going to say screw it and count that as part of the run. It's better now? Awesome. So. That didn't happen. Just like me running out of the quad shots for the rapid fire lasers, that did not happen. So, uh, you see these turrets on the bottom? These guys will drop rapid fire lasers sometimes. It's it's not like an impossible odds for it happening, but generally do not count on it happening as part of the route for the, like this run or the any percent route. Thank you, TTC, 4% chance. TTC is extremely knowledgeable about this game. Uh, he's been a major help for like figuring out routing and uh, establishing categories for the game in general. Because when I originally submitted this game, I submitted it as any percent. 
And then uh, TTC pointed out that uh, it's possible to skip a bunch of the objectives. So now the game has three categories. Uh, any percents, all objectives, which I'm doing right now, and all tunnels. Because aside from the ones that you see me going through, there are other tunnels hidden on the map. Uh, okay, good, it didn't reject me. So this tunnel is extremely narrow, and as such, I'm less worried about missing any items, so I can just full throttle it the whole way through. Not even the worst tech problem today. I mean, that sort of makes me feel better. Oh my god. Sorry, I just got completely turned around. There we go. This tunnel's a little wider, so I gotta make sure I don't miss any weapon power-ups. This is another thing too, is this is when you start going through several networks of tunnels, and it can become really difficult to see where some of the tunnels are. Like, I've played this enough to know where they should be, but if you're at the wrong angle, it's very easy for them to just blend in with the floor, and then you'll have no idea where to go. Right. Got another boss coming up. I'm gonna use my base weapon just to save some rapid fire ammo. Switch over to my vipers. Wait, I missed one. There. So the bosses become significantly easier when you realize you can mash and get way more shots in. Because otherwise, uh, the fire rate for the missiles is about, I want to say, like two per second. I'm sure TTC can fact check me on that. So we just fought a boss, but this is one of the levels that has multiple bosses for it. And I just got turned around after that shot. Alright, that's better. Now on the any percent route, this level is extremely short. Because there's a tunnel, like tucked into like some part of the map that you would ordinarily never go to, where uh, you go through it, come out the other side, and then the level just ends. You can bypass the boss on this level in the end percent route. Oh, I'm upside down. There, that's better. Sets. I missed the dead on missiles, but that's not the end of the world. Dead on missiles drop uh, pretty regularly in this game, so missing one or two of those is not a huge deal. Missing Bion Fury missiles is a big deal. Right. Got another boss. Now, some of these bosses are very clearly modeled after like certain animals, certain plant life. This guy, I have no idea. I'm trying to change up my fire so that I'm not using up too much of one weapon. And we're good. It is possible to damage enemies and structures by ramming it with your ship. And that may come into play a little later in this run. Uh, if things don't work out the way I want them to. But that does basically, like, chip damage. And welcome to New Croy. So for this one, this is when uh, verticality, like uh, altitude, verticality start playing a role. 
because, oh my god, there was so many structures on screen, I couldn't tell where I was going. On the radar, I mean. So this is where you have to start like, going to the top of buildings and then diving down into the roadways. Uh, it also starts messing with you on targets a little bit. Because it starts off by just saying, oh, destroy all these radar dishes. And then suddenly it wants you to destroy units on the ground. So if you're not ready for that, you can end up getting a little confused. That's more so a casual play thing than a speedrun thing, but it happens. Uh, okay, I screwed that one up. <laughs> I thought I had one more target for some reason. My bad. Here we are. These little guys need to be destroyed. This is another opportunity where... Actually, what's my ammo? Okay, I can switch over to my default weapon for a little bit. Oh. We've got turbo drops, we've got laser drops. I'm taking all of this. Because you may look at my turbo and think, Oh, you've got plenty. Why are you bothering to stop for more? Uh, turbos kind of vary in their drop rates, depending on what world you're in. And there are certain points later in the game where it just becomes really scarce. Like, you're either making a massive detour to get more of it, or you stockpile beforehand so that you don't have to do that. And I'm doing the latter. Right. So I'm just going to shoot forward a little bit. Hope I get some drops out of these guys. Oh, that was actually quite good. I got a decent amount of turbo and some laser shots out of that. Last couple times I tried that, I got like almost nothing. Right, that'll bring us to the tunnel. And for the longest time, this part coming up, not this part, but the boss at the end of this part was a major roadblock because we would fight this boss, it would get destroyed, you'd go out the exit tunnel and the game would crash. But uh, TTC figured out what was causing it and I will explain it as soon as I hopefully do not screw this up. That boss is done. got myself turned around again, and there's the tunnel. Alright, so, uh, with this boss, you have to ensure that it has a negative health value at the end of the fight. Uh, you do that by either using Bion Fury missiles, which I did, or uh, ramming into the boss once, because otherwise, uh, regardless of what weapon you use, except for the Bion Furies, It'll cause the boss to end with a health value of zero. And for whatever reason, that causes the game to crash. Uh, there's still a slight chance that it could crash uh, even doing that, but it's far, far, far lower. This is one of those levels where uh, if you don't know where like certain power-ups are, it's very easy to run out of turbos here. Also, if you don't already know where the targets are, the flying units that you're seeing on the screen, well, the ones that I just destroyed, uh, they have one death animation they like to do where they go into a tailspin, and then it takes them like a solid 10 seconds to hit the ground. So if you don't already know where you're going, that can end up wasting a bunch of time because it's not until they finish that death animation that the next target pops up on your radar. And these are more targets that kind of mess with my colorblindness because they really blend into the ground. Oh, turbo, nice.
when you really get the routing on this down, you can like, approach targets from certain angles to just make sure that you wipe all of them out in one fell swoop. TTC in particular is really good at that. Right, so it's around the second level where we're going to start getting more into the tunnels again. Uh, also, in the first level, for those supply trucks, you had to destroy the entire convoy. From this point out, you can just destroy the supply truck itself, and then that'll count as destroying the target. It's another one of those instances where the game makes you think you have to do one thing, and then you don't actually have to do it uh, outside of certain situations. Oh, there's that tailspin animation. And I'm getting shockingly low on rapid fire, so I'm going to try and ride this out with my base weapon for a little bit. Or I may just switch to the Dominator missiles. Although I think I should get more lasers somewhere in this tunnel. Yep, right there. going to be another level where there are multiple bosses, and one of them is going to be an outdoor boss. Uh, I'll get more into that when the boss actually appears. However, it is an awesome looking boss that is incredibly disappointing to fight. You'll see what I mean when we get there. And my turbo is also getting a little low. Fortunately, there's some turbo right here. And that one drops dispersion cannons. I'm gonna grab that just in case, even though it's not a particularly good weapon. Okay, so this should be the checkpoint that leads into the next boss, which means I'm just gonna switch to my missile. Yep, here we go. So, here's the snake. Snake is dead. Moving on. As, as someone who likes snakes, I find that boss particularly disappointing. Now, just to be safe, I'm going to apparently waste some uh, Bion Fury missiles, but I'm going to grab that turbo, because sometimes I will get to the last level in this and then run out of turbo about a couple hundred feet away from a turbo power-up, and it ends up wasting a few seconds. Yes, I did. So that's going to be a little bit of a time loss. I'm just going to switch to my base weapon for a little bit. So this is the next boss fight in Nubis. He is powered by sarcophagi and... Goodbye, Anubis. Oh, I got rejected by the tunnel, and now I'm upside down. All right, so there's one particular part in this tunnel that, where you absolutely do not want to miss the power-ups. It is this line of turbo. I'm a little worried that I'm getting low on certain weapons, but as long as I have a steady supply of turbo, I'm fine. So Vetra can be an extremely annoying level, because this is a level where I call it the rocks fall, you die level. Although the rocks usually don't kill you, they just like, spin you around and disorient you. 
I actually like this level because the tunnels in this level make it really easy to tell when you have flipped upside down. So, if you're just playing through this level casually, there are some targets that might be a little confusing to go after. And there's a reason for that. So you have to destroy these buildings, but you also have to destroy these things that are taking off. Uh, if you wait too long, those things will just keep going further and further up. Uh, so if you miss one and then have to go back for it, uh, if you take too long, they're going to be like way up in the sky and you may not see them at all. Alright. There is a way to bank in this game, but it can be a little tough to bank your turns properly in this, so it's not the most reliable way to move around, but I make it work. That's actually part of the reason that I keep the throttle down uh, most of the game, is because that allows me to just let off the turbo and make a really sharp turn. Right, so I'm going to slow down a little here, just to make sure my shields are decent. Excellent. For some reason, I thought that was going to be a uh, laser power-up. Uh, all the power-ups in those things are in set locations, so it's just a matter of trying to remember where everything is for that. Ah. Okay, this tunnel can be a little awkward to go into, if it is the one I think it is. Yeah, because there are some enemies around it. What usually happens to me there is I'll go for the tunnel, one of the enemies shoots me, uh, causes me to bounce off to the side, and I slam into the wall and just miss the tunnel completely. Ah, time for the best power-up in the game. There are actually, on this difficulty at least, a decent amount of invisibility and invincibility power-ups. And as weird as it sounds, they are incredibly useful for entering tunnels. Because I'm sure uh, if TTC's around, he can explain the tech on this, but it makes the game way more forgiving for um, like whether you enter the tunnel or not. Because uh, the game can kind of be spontaneously picky about um, like lining up properly for it. Sometimes you'll slam into the wall next to it and they'll say you're fine, and other times they'll just be just slightly off and it'll cause you to slam into the wall. So this is going to be the end of this mission. And I'm just, it's still a decent ways away, but I'm just gonna say it now. I hate the boss for this level. Oh wow, it was surprisingly generous on that tunnel entry. Because most other bosses in this game are like really simple. You just either destroy the generator and bombard it with missiles, or you bombard it with missiles. But this one coming up, you kinda can't do that. Also we're invincible, so I can just do this. And that's done. It's actually quite satisfying to just burn through a tunnel in this game with invincibility on. Okay, this is a much wider tunnel, but it's also much easier to get turned upside down here. Well, get turned upside down and not realize it at least. I missed a turbo power-up, that's not good. All right, 
Alright, so this tunnel should lead into the boss. Yeah, this is another awkward tunnel to get into, and it rejected me. That one you kind of have to do like a banked turn to get the proper angle on it without losing any speed. So, this is just a mess. <laughs> You gotta hit this thing in the face, but I call this boss the drinking bird. He just kind of does this over and over and over as explosions are going off around you. And you just gotta kind of aim in the general di uh, direction of where its head would be. And you gotta move to the side a little to get some extra hits in. Ugh, my arm hurts. And this tunnel is really hard to see, but there's a ton of turbo, there's a ton of lasers. It's a major help uh, going into the next couple of levels. And welcome to the water planet, I guess. You don't actually go underwater, it's just everything's kind of aquatic themed. And I don't know why we're destroying the robot jungle gyms. But apparently that's in uh, integral to their plan. very conscious of my mashing right now because what tends to happen uh, when I try to do runs of this is uh, my arm will get tired, understandably, but then my hand starts to move around and the problem with this is that uh, the V and C keys will change your view and change your cockpit layout that's on the screen. So it can be double disorienting if I accidentally hit those keys during the run. feeling pretty confident about our turbo count right now, although I'm less confident about the hitboxes for these things. You gotta kind of aim to the middle of the tower on those, otherwise it can like struggle to register. Sometimes if I shoot them from underneath it feels like I'm doing no damage at all. Skyline is going to get pretty low on some of these because they can kind of watch you to go above the skyline, but if you just follow the targets, you can fly right below it and not lose sight of the enemies around you. All right, so the route for this is really simple on all objectives. You're basically just following the valley the whole way through. Any percent you can skip over this because it kind of moves in a U-shape. And uh, along the way there's another like weapon slash supply cache you can use. Not as practical for an all objectives run. Any percent run, very useful. Pause right before that one because, like the last few runs I've done, those things have like spun me around and caused me to miss the tunnel. But we're in. So casually, 
If you don't know about mashing, the boss for this level can actually be kind of a challenge. However, if you do know about mashing, uh, he's actually not that difficult. Let's destroy the shield generators. Load up the Bion Furies. So, for safety's sake, I'm going to grab a shield restore, and then I'm going to leave. I don't know why this level loves the dispersion cannon so much, but I'm probably not going to make use of them throughout the run. Absolutely do not want to miss any of those Bion Fury missiles. If I remember correctly, if you miss any of the Bion Fury missiles on an N% percent run, it's basically an instant reset. So this level, like all the targets are the same, it's all these floating ships. But it makes you do kind of a roundabout route. So I'm going to try and fly a little bit off the beaten path and see if I can intercept a couple of these early. No, I missed the route for it. That's okay. I can still do this the normal way. The real pain about this is not necessarily the time loss, but the turbo loss. I mean, it seems like I have a decent amount at 600 right now, but um, that's not going to look as good as I start going through the second stage of this area. I may actually have to switch to just full throttling it. Alright. Fleets. So there are only two levels left in the game. Unfortunately, turbo is going to get a little bit scarce for the route that I'm going to be on. So I'm just going to try and make the best of it. a rapid fire laser down there. I don't necessarily need that. going relatively smoothly so far. However, the turbo being at around 250 does have me very worried. If I can just hold out until I get to the final stage of this world, I think I can make this work. wasn't destroyed for some reason. Definitely gonna run out of turbo. 
I'm gonna have full throttle ready. All right, so the rest of this is going to go a little slow. Which unfortunately means all the enemy ships are going to start catching up with me. Uh, however, when you get into the third level, there are a couple spots where turbo will spawn. So it's annoying to have to slow down a little bit, but at least there is another way to work around this. safety's sake. There. 300 should carry me through. more targets to destroy, and then we'll hit the tunnel, and then after that we'll fight the boss, get out of the tunnel, hit the jump zone, and the run will be over. Switching back to my racket fires. Oh, those are kind of low, too. Am I going to have to break out the Dominator missiles for this? Excuse me, dead-on missiles. It just says D-O-M on the readout, so sometimes I get a little confused. Okay, for this, I'm going to try and speed this up a bit, because we're going to have uh, most of the items that we need already to deal with the last boss. who is just going to try and swat us out of the air, I guess. So most bosses like this will have four of these shield generator things. This guy gets you because he has a fifth one in the middle of the room. And he's dead. And now it's just a mad dash for the finish line. Emphasis on mad. This is another common place where uh, you can run out of turbo on this route, but there is turbo in the middle of the tunnel. It's a turbo tunnel, you might say. I'm going to get myself right side up, because otherwise it can be a little disorienting coming out of the tunnel. And here we go. Oh god. Alright, so time is going to be when I uh, get the congratulations screen. Time. Oh my god, that's a new best time. How? With all the things that went wrong in that. With that elite gamer move with the, the window getting minimized and blown up. How? Well, we did it. We we saved all those planets from evil robots. Uh, I can't believe that happened. <laughs> I mean, that was so ugly. I don't know if I should even submit this time. But that was Fury 3. Um, I would say check it out on GOG or Steam, but it's not on either of those. Oh, it might be on Abandonware. <laughs> 